Barry Mickelson. Yes, I'm I'm here. Thank you very much. I want to thank you for holding these hearings. And uh, a few comments I'd like to make. One is the housing problem is a lot greater than just uh, providing individual housing units. It's part of a comprehensive problem that really has to be addressed in a more comprehensive way. Uh, any of these are are are, are just band aid approaches. I'm uh, I've been a planner for all of my professional life. I started my career working in the Ocean Hill Brownsville. Uh, section of Brooklyn, and uh, I'm, I'm well acquainted with the problems of, of affordable housing and non-affordable housing. Uh, the desegregate uh, uh, crowd and, and group, you know, uh, indicates that they feel that zoning is exclusionary. I've been to hundreds and hundreds of zoning meetings in, 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 in Fairfield County, and I have never seen anything that was even remotely discriminatory. Decisions are generally based on sound practices of, of reasonable land use planning. Uh, as far as the, the programs that are being approached, and I, as I mentioned before, we need a comprehensive planning. Our economy here is flat. Our, our unemployment rate is 3.5%. Uh, we need jobs here. We are we here, I'm in Stanford. We are losing valuable industrial and commercial space for, for housing. And as we build more housing, we're finding the housing prices don't go down. But the base rents of houses of the, of the housing that we're building is going up. So what are we actually doing? And we have a BMR where we subsidize lower cost housing that are below market. So what are we doing? We're actually exacerbating the problem because our rents are going up higher. So these are not uh, the, the, the solutions or the panacea. Um, the other thing I have to say here, and I'm being very brief and I know uh, my points, is respect. There are a lot of folks here who have to pay for these subsidies. We pay through high taxes and we see continually a real uh, 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 division growing because people are just being uh, taxed out of the state. And we have to have respect for people who came to Connecticut for a particular way of life. Yes, we will always need and always have to support a housing safety net, but there has to be some respect for the folks who live here, who pay the pills here, who pay the taxes here. Well, people who love the state and don't want to be taxed out or pushed out of the state as well. Planning, good planning, is a balancing act of many, many different components, not one necessarily pitted against the other. And we shouldn't be pitted against one another, like we're being with some of these acts now. The idea, and I've been here before these committees before, that we, that we uh, sublimate our local control for some Hartford effort or some other effort is not acceptable. And it's really, as I said, it's doing more destruction and dividing the state in a horrible, horrible way. There are states that are growing, and we should be emulating and looking and see what, what they've done. A little state like Idaho is growing leaps and bounds. Why are we stagnant? Do we have a look? By providing more opportunities here and getting jobs here, we might be able to decrease the amount of housing problems that we do have. As I said, we'll always need a safety net. But it doesn't seem that we're really solving Your time has expired. Can you please summarize? Uh, Yes, because we continue to have more and more folks that need housing uh, uh, and housing uh, subsidy. So we're really not solving the problem. Matter of fact, the problem is remaining flat and our economy is flat. We've really got to figure out a way to grow out of this and do more comprehensive planning and not put Band-Aids on this problem. I want to thank you very much for your time. If anyone has any questions, I said I've been doing this for about 50 years now. I know what I'm talking about. Thank you. Any questions? Representative Weir. Thank you for your testimony, sir. And I, you talked about um, our economy being flat, um, our, uh, you know, the price, rental prices going up, our housing stock being flat. And also, I don't think you mentioned our population, but at any rate, in your opinion, you know, you talk about, you know, we have to pull out of this and we have to fix this. What, in your opinion, who is best to create the policy or create the, um, you know, to fix the situation? And I, I guess it's a, it's a complicated, um, so, you know, there's many different factors involved, but who is best suited to uh, making some of these corrections to get us back on track, if I heard you correctly? Through you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that question, because I've given it a lot of thought. We recently did a housing study here, and we look at people from our own Stanford Neighborhoods Coalition. And one of the, 
the points I constantly heard, especially from lower folk, uh, income folks of color, they said they want opportunities to buy. They want to be able to be part of the, uh, the American dream. They want generational wealth. But we have older neighborhoods. And yes, it may not be as glitzy as, as putting up high rises or, or new things, but allowing people to get into those homes, and just like the generation who came out of World War II, let them invest in a property, a two-family house, and let them rent out part of it, earn some, some uh, uh, equity in a home, be able to, 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 to migrate out and small steps. But we have a lot of older neighborhoods. We, we, don't, we don't properly uh, provide the impetus or the support or the, or the loan kind of programs to help people get those houses into shape. And so they're livable. We let these houses decay. Then we come in and we bulldoze them. And the irony of the whole thing is we're not even, when we, when we build these new housing, we're not even accommodating the people who are being displaced. As I said, it's a complex problem, but we really, I think part of our key is some of these older neighborhoods where there is housing and help folks get it back on track again, being able to rent it out, let them build equity, and also providing jobs. We're losing a lot of commercial space, especially here in Fairfield. I mean, we're talking about going into corporate parks uh, and, and building all kinds of numbers of units. And they're not people from Connecticut that are coming in here. We're not satisfying our own housing problem. We're satisfying others as people try to flee uh, in, from New York. But we've got to create an oasis that works for Connecticut, where we become, a, we become a, uh, a, an economy onto our own. We're, I don't see any jobs coming into Connecticut here. Uh, we've, yeah, we've had a few here, but certainly not near where we need it. Our economy is basically, uh, uh, as I said before, it's, it's flat. When you look at what's going on in some of our other states, we're not so doing we're something right. A little that away from the, the base of Representative Weir's question. Okay, I'm but sorry. Thank you, very, thank you very much for that little bit of insight. I know it's not going to be solved here, but I appreciate the input of one or a few of the factors. So I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. But we got to look at some of our own neighborhoods. And it's not as sexy, but, you know, it's a start. And that's the way we kind of just start pulling ourselves up. These large housing complexes, nobody really wants them. 